for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. Many of the incidents in the story you are about to hear are based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic. Burn a candle at both ends, and the candle lasts half as long. I did it for nine years. For nine years, I lived two lives as opposite as day and night, life and death. Sometimes living a double life brings death just twice as close and closer. It did for me many times. Well, I was a communist for the FBI. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Savetic, undercover man. Dana Andrews as Matt Sabetic, undercover man. This story from his confidential file is marked, I Can't Sleep. Yes? Mr. Baker, please, right away. Who's calling, Mr. Baker? Tom Roberts. Come on, get on it. This is Baker. Go ahead. I've got to see you right away. I'm heading for a conference with a big wheel, and if it's about what I think it is, I'd better talk to you. Where are you calling from? Drugstore phone booth. Then let me do the talking. Do you think the meeting might be about Otto Janus? They say it was suicide. I think it was murder. Never mind what you think. Let the comrades think you believe it was suicide. Was it? Look, Matt, go to that conference with Buchek, but watch yourself. You may be in a tough spot. I have a funny feeling I'm on the same spot Otto Janis was before he got here. Go to the meeting, then meet me on the southwest corner of 9th and Viaduct. Okay. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. I wonder as I walk toward Communist headquarters for my meeting with Joseph Buchek, was Otto Janis told to watch himself before they found him dead? My footsteps echo the cadence of a name familiar to Americans who read good books. Otto Janis. Otto Janis, author. Critic. Otto Janis. Author Farewell Nero. Author Citizen Slav. Author Trumpet the Brave Country. History. Immigrant. Patriot. Communist Party member. Corpse. Found hanging pitifully in his hotel room in New York City. Why such an end to such a man? How? That's what Joseph Buchek wants to talk to me about. Little Joe. Very close to Big Joe himself in the Kremlin. Watch yourself, Savetic. Comrade Savetic, I have work for you. Always ready, comrade, as you know. As you know, the party has just suffered a great loss in the tragic death of the head of our Slovene Bureau in New York. We were all shocked to hear about Comrade Janice. Found hanging in his hotel room. I uh, know. Tragic. The papers say suicide. The capitalist press says suicide while it implies murder. They seem to implicate the party. As only they can. Well, the answer is to prove that it was suicide. As only we can. Your assignment, Comrade Tibetic, is to go to New York and establish that Comrade Janus hanged himself. After all, why should we murder one of our most trusted comrades? Eh, Tibetic? When do I leave? I ask you. Why, it's manifestly ridiculous to think we made away with Janus. As you say, why should we? Unless he was an FBI agent, which I am sure he was not. You leave tonight. I'd better wire for a hotel reservation. A reservation is ready for you. The Santa Braddock Hotel. May I ask, just how do I go about proving that Otto Janus killed himself, if the police are in doubt? You will receive instructions in New York. Very well. Where you will deliver three separate addresses to the meeting of the press committees on newspaper propaganda. Want to say three days in New York? Where you will also report to the Sovian Bureau as the new acting chief. Me? Replace Otto Janus? Why not? You knew him. You sometimes checked his manuscripts for political reliability. You're one of his nationality. 
What is more natural than that you should succeed, our mourned comrade, temporarily. So the meeting was about autogenesis, eh, Matt? Yeah. Can the FBI answer a big question for me? I don't know, Savetic. What's the question? Was Janice an undercover agent, like myself? I can't answer that. Why are they really sending me to New York? We want to know, too. We'll give you all the help we can. Watch yourself, Savetic. <laughs> I tried to sleep, sitting up on the night coach to New York, thinking, did Otto Janus wear two faces like myself? How did he die? Suicide or cleverly disguised murder? Over and over again, round and around. I can't sleep. And then, mercifully, I do fall asleep. Hey, how's that, stranger? Janus. Out of Janus. Yeah, yeah. Get off my shoulder, huh? Suicide. Hey. Suicide. Hey, fellow, wake up. Watch this. Watch this. Watch. Hey, wake up, guy, will you? Huh? What? Are you always talking in your sleep? Talk. What did I say? I don't know. Butchers or something. What else? What else? I don't know. Just mumbling, I guess. And butchers. Oh. Hey, hey, what's the matter? You got a beef against butchers? Not that I know of. Oh. oh. Excuse me, will you? Don't leave me keep you awake. That's all right. I've had enough sleep. Plenty. I sit up tensely all night. I never used to talk in my sleep. Maybe it's beginning to get me. In the morning, bleary-eyed and stubble-chinned, I check into the hotel in New York. It's a nice double room with twin beds. An unusual extravagance for the party. But I'm a big man now. I don't wait to unpack before I pick up the phone to check with communist headquarters. Report in. Operator, will you give me Sheridan 371? Never mind that number, operator. Thanks. Yeah, come in. Is the medic? Yes. Who are you? Uh, who am I? <laughs> Look at these suitcases. I'm your dormitory mate. That's who I am. Yeah. Dormitory mate. Uh, Carp. Comrade Carp. With a K. I wasn't told I'd have a roommate when I got here. I'm attending the press committee's meeting, same as you, comrade. i got to use the telephone. Excuse me. Uh, hello, operator. Wait a minute. Uh, Hang up. Well, I've got a report. Hang up. <laughs> I like you, comrade. I like you. You don't take no for an answer. Eh? I want to know more about you before I split a room with you. Yeah, well, Carp is the name. With a K, I know. And that's all I know so far. That's why I'm calling headquarters, comrade. So we can both check on each other. Eh? <laughs> you see? Uh, hey, wage slave. How about Sheridan 37115? I sit on one of the beds as Carp with a K. Talks to communist headquarters and establishes beyond question his right to be here. Then I report and get my orders for the day. While I talk, I size up Carp. I study his luggage. And all at once, the cold sweat starts all over my body. One piece of luggage is a battered suitcase, but the other is a big, powerful tape sound recorder. I finish my call and hang up frozenly. A sound recorder? Why? I'm going to spend three nights in this room with Comrade Carp, and I'm the undercover boy who's taken lately to talking in his sleep. And all at once... I wonder who the man beside me in the train was. Was he sent to watch me, too? Did he tip off the party to send Comrade Carp to haunt me with a tape recorder? I don't know. I don't know. Or don't I? Yes, yeah, sir, you're Comrade uh, Savetic, eh? <laughs> you tell me you were a friend of Artagenis. A comrade is more like it, in the strict party sense only. Yeah. Why do you suppose he bumped himself off, anyway? That's what I'm here to find out. How are you going to get at the facts? Comrade Buchek said I'd receive instructions how to proceed when I got here. Yeah. You're getting your instructions now, comrade. Your instructions are that comrade Otto Janus committed suicide. I understand. 
You were here to meet with the press committees this afternoon to plan the spreading of that fact among the Slav element in America. Give me the line on Janice, then. All right, he was a sensitive artist. He was an ill help. He'd been worrying about the precipice of chaos and war to which capitalistic aggression was leading his beloved adopted country. All right. I wish Buchek had been more specific with me, that's all. <laughs> so Comrade Buchek was specific with me, and I'm specific with you. <laughs> Same difference. Now, uh, Comrade, yeah. what's the tape recorder for? Oh, that? Oh, uh, record the minutes of the meeting. Copy them down later. Why? Well, I'm sort of a high-fidelity sound hobbyist myself. That's a good machine. Yeah, sensitive as the human ear. And it works while you sleep. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> works while you sleep. Hey, wait a minute. You kidding? <laughs> Think I'm going to stay awake during all that palaver if I can grab 40 winks while this machine listens in? Good idea. Yeah. Well, I'm going to grab some sleep right now. Immediately and at once. Yeah. Me too, comrade. <laughs> I'm tired, all right. Dead dog tired, and I'd love to sleep. But I can't. I've become an unstable character who wakes up screaming beside strangers in railroad coaches. I'm the man with two faces, a communist for the FBI, opening slightly at the seams. I've got three nights ahead of me in New York with Comrade Carp in the same room with me, listening. And if he doesn't listen, that sensitive machine has ears. Oh, yeah. I'm dead, dog-tired. I don't dare sleep for three more whole days and nights. Suppose I talk. I don't dare sleep. Back to Dana Andrews, starring in I Was a Communist for the FBI, and the second act of our story. The war of nerves is on. One night up on the train, last night's sleeplessness. Two more endless nights ahead of me, and never, never out of sight of the comrades so I can snatch a moment's sleep. I can't last through that. Nobody can. Only, I've got to. Two in the morning, the second night. I'm fighting off sleep like some overpowering drug. Carp, jolly, jolly comrade, is sleeping lightly. But sleeping, he sleeps. When he gets too tired to sleep lightly, he'll plug in that tape recorder and sleep heavily. Sure. Three o'clock. And I can't take this anymore. I can't. I, I can't stay awake. I've got to do something. I'll go mad or kill myself. Something. Operator. Operator, give me room service. No. No, give me the drugstore. But, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Hello? Drugstore? Look. I know there's a kind of... Uh, a kind of tablet. A tablet they take when they want to stay awake on, on long drives, you know? I said there's a kind of tablet. I can't speak any louder. I, I might wake up my comrade, my partner. I said, have you got those, those stay-awake tablets they use when... Hey, it's the medic. Oh, never mind then. Thanks, anyhow. Hey. What are you talking to there, Savetic? Drugstore, that's all. Yeah? What time is it? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Right. I can't sleep. I asked him to send up some sleeping pills. Sleeping pills? Yeah. Sleeping pills? Yeah. Why? Why? Don't you know you can't buy those things without a doctor's prescription? Oh, yeah, sure. So the pharmacist told me. Hmm. <laughs> ah, relax, relax. Take yourself a glass of lukewarm water. Let yourself go limp. Relax. Okay, I'll try that. Hey, you'll sleep. Thanks, Helen. You betcha. <laughs> Hey, hey, somebody. <laughs> Time to get up. <laughs> yeah. Now rise and shine. One of those cheerful risers, aren't they?
pronto. Mind to get some sleep, comrade? Um. Hello, boy. Hello, I'll be out of here in two shakes. Hmm? Ready? Hey, hey, Sabetic, wake up. I wasn't asleep. Come on, arise and shine, boy. Arise and shine. Somehow, I managed to stumble and mumble through my work during the day. All day into the evening, part of the night, finishing up our stay. Work, the party. Down with them and up with us. Up. Up. I've been up. I've been up three days and three nights now. I can't see straight. I don't know if I can take it again. And I can't shake the comrades to steal an hour's sleep somewhere. I want to scream at them. I want to yell at them to go away and leave me alone. Let me sleep or I'll go crazy or I'll... Or I'll... Rather than fall asleep and talk, kill myself. Fourth night. Agony. Let me go. FBI. FBI. I hate the FBI. I hate him. I hate him. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. I sit up in bed. I've been asleep. I've been asleep and I've talked. I know I've talked. I heard myself. I woke myself up with it. FBI, I said. I heard it. Did he? I looked over at Carp, a jolly comrade. He's asleep, but his mechanical stooge isn't. Carp's limp hand is wound around a toggle switch, and the wire leads under the bed to the sound recorder. With my sleep talking on the tape, there's only one thing to do. I do it. Creep out of bed, belly close to the floor. Slither under Carp's bed. Stop the recorder. Erase the sound from the tape magnetically. Wait an eternity for the reel to wind back and erase the tape. Carp tosses in his sleep. I freeze. Silence again. Then, carefully, I start the recorder normally again. Creep back into my bed. This time, Sovetic. This time, keep awake if it kills you. Because if you don't keep awake, it may kill you too. Get that, Sovetic. You get it. Get it. All right. Okay. Yeah? Tom Roberts? You've got the wrong room. No, no. This is Mr. Baker from out of town. Baker? Try to meet me in front of the main library on Fifth Avenue. Understand? I heard you, yes. There's no Roberts here. And I don't know a Mr. Baker. You've got the wrong room. Goodbye. Party work is done by noon. Getting away to meet Baker is easy now. I find him sitting on the steps of the library near one of the marble lions. Hometown boy, am I glad to see you. We don't talk. We take a cab and go to an office in the West 40s. And there, Baker unlimbers a portable recorder of his own. Starts it rolling. Does that sound familiar to you? Just a lot of traffic noises far away. The FBI here knew about the meeting and which room you have. We wired the room the first night you arrived. What did you find out, if anything? Listen. Oh, well, I know that sound by now. Oh. Okay. Let me go. Let me go. That sounds like me. Yeah, that's you, all right. FBI. FBI. I hate the FBI. I hate him. I hate him. Let me go. Let me go. Cut. You picked that up last night? 
You uh, talked in your sleep. I know. I tried to stay awake, but I couldn't. It just so happens that you couldn't have said anything more in your favor if your roommate overheard you. He didn't. His tape recorder did. And to think I crawled in a cop's bed to erase that stuff. They'd have loved me in the Kremlin. You erased it? Well, how did I know what I'd babbled in my sleep? And you started the machine again? Naturally. Savetic, look alive. What's the matter? Carp knows when he started that machine. When he hears the clock on that tape striking three and four, he'll know the tape was erased and started over again. He'll know who did it and why you did it. And suspect the worst. Fine. Uh, we all make mistakes. Yeah. We've taken the room next to yours. If anything happens, we'll try to help you. Thanks. I said we'll try. Thanks. So long, Baker. Oh, come in, comrade. Come in. <laughs> Just running off some tape, I exposed last night. That's so? Yeah, I don't know what I caught. So far, nothing. What did you expect to catch? Yeah. All I got is traffic from outside. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. Steeple clock. I watch Cart's rapt face as the clock on the tape strikes three. He keeps on smiling. But I know these people, the comrades. I know them so well that I know the verdict on Otto Janus's death. Suicide. I know that he, too, must have been on the spot and chose suicide rather than endure the maddening torture the comrades could inflict. I knew Otto Janus hanged himself, because I almost came to that. Verdict, suicide. Mission accomplished. Boy, there's a real late sailing. Ship held up in the fog, likely. Probably. <laughs> you know, these things are a lot of use. A lot of fun, too, Semitic. And then, all at once, the truth hits me. I know that the clock chiming three on the tape when it shouldn't chime more than two hasn't rung any bells with Comrade Karp. And I know something else, and know it right. And that is that the myth of the new Soviet man's wit and cunning is a myth. We can be as smart as they are, and they can be as dense as we are any time of the day or in the dead of the night. So long, Comrade Karp. Uh, where to, Comrade? Hey, Wade, how about 40 winks before we catch the train back? Oh, me? I feel fine. I'm going for a walk. I don't know if Otto Janus was an FBI agent playing communist, like myself, or not. I think the comrades thought so and gave him some treatment like my own. And he killed himself rather than take it anymore. At least that's my conclusion. It makes me think. Walk carefully, Svetic. Walk carefully and walk alone. It might have been you. Our star, Dana Andrews, will return in a moment. This is Dana Andrews. The story you've just heard is just one of many that make the life of an undercover agent exciting and adventurous from a nice, safe distance. For obvious reasons, names, dates, and places have been changed, but our stories are based on the real-life experiences of Matt Svetic. Next week, we open his file for another exciting adventure. Join us then, won't you? Mm -hmm.